Good evening, everybody, and uh, thanks for inviting me out. Um, it's it's pretty humbling for me, really. Um, yeah, I, I belong to an armor club, and uh, and I, I go to a lot of the shows, and, and you know, it's it's nice to be able to to show off some of your some of your work. Um, so tonight we're going to talk about weathering and having conversations with George. Uh, the techniques. So obviously, I'm an armor modeler. These these are the, the three big boys are are are, uh, are German tanks from World War II. The two on the table are King Tigers. Uh, this is a hunting tiger. This was the biggest tank of World War II, 72 tons. Uh, came out in 1944. No turret, as you can tell there. It's just a stationary assault gun. This, the little guy is an Italian uh, M13 from the uh, Desert War of 1940 to 1943. And uh, it's... Italian armor is not a very, uh, it's a very, it's not a very uh, robust subject, but I, I, I enjoy it, and uh, uh, it's uh, it's something different to look at. In contrast, I mean, and you also see the development of armor from what it looked like in 1940 to 1944. It's it's unbelievable. Can you move the camera so we can just just, see just hold it? In. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Here's the here's the Italian. Yeah. Beautiful, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. No. Very subtle weather in there. Difference like, in size. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the difference in size is <laughs> is. Uh, let's see if I move that. There you go. Yeah. So yeah, armor development came a long way, uh, and obviously Italian armor was not uh, not not that good. Uh, the gun was pretty good, but the armor itself is riveted. Uh, which means when it got hit, uh, you know, those rivets uh, didn't hold together because the, the Italians didn't have the foundry, the capability to cast. Um, we had the same issue. If you look at our first Grant tanks we produced, they were riveted uh, until we built the capability to be able to cast. Um, and we built that hull, um, in, which became the, 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 uh, the hull for the Sherman um, because we had, weren't able to cast the turret yet. Um, so... It, uh, we had we had some of the same issues, except the Italians just couldn't industrialize. So, without further ado, we're going to talk about weathering. I, I can sit here, and if I get off tangent, just tell me to shut up and, and talk about what you want to talk about. Um, we're going to talk about weathering and uh, what I use oils and I use pigments. I, I don't know if you, you guys are familiar with pigments at all, with, with like powder. Yeah, a lot of guys do like right. railroad. That kind yeah, of thing. so yeah. you know, pigment. Uh, so that's, a powder. that's a powder. That's correct, mm -hmm. right? So is this here, right? Two different shades. I, I, so I brought a couple of different things. Yeah. Now, um, if we go, can we go to the pictures real quick? Ooh. I don't know if I'll be able to do that. Can you do that? Or no? here. Mm -hmm. I don't have another cable, so I'm just working off one cable. Oh, okay, that's fine. We'll do it in a minute. How, how, do, you, how do you you rub the pigment in or on? Yeah, I'll. Uh, I can show you exactly how we do All that. Right. Yeah, he's got yeah. a sample. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so this tank right here is is not complete yet. Um, it, it's it's still in process, and uh, the the other three are are complete. But some of the some of the subtle things that uh, want to be able to show, if you can. You can see that if you see the streaking. Yeah, yeah beautiful. All the right? and the see the, the, yeah. If you see the streaking there, see that's all done with oils um, and the subtleness of it. Um, let's see if I put it down. Yeah, you, you can still see it pretty good. So, specifically, you know, here is something that's a little bit more defined, but the ones that are really, really good are these subtle ones that you see here, right? They give you that kind of look, right? Then, so the reason that this is a different color, this is, this the, the German under primer was a, was a red primer that they painted on, onto the, onto the uh, metal. So when the skirts fall off, right? When it was painted, right, and the skirts were on, you still had the metal primer underneath there, right? So that's why that's red like that. And, that, and then you can you know, use your different colors there. So the other thing that's really good with the oils, and, it, and the reason that they're so forgiving is if you look at the wheels, right? This is all done with oils. 
to get the different grease looks. So he, here's, here's the, if there's anything that I want to impart to you, the methodology is when, and, and Michael Rinaldi is, I, I didn't invent this right, Michael Rinaldi is the guy that, that talks about this, and there's a couple of YouTube videos if you're interested in looking at some of his stuff. But the reason I really like oils is that this really can become like a, like a canvas, like, your, like a picture. So, and the oils are so forgiving that they don't dry for a couple of days that you can always go back and you can, if you really don't like something, go and enhance something, you, you always got to, you can always change it. But the beauty of the oils is, is that you, I, a lot of, a lot of modelers, right, they'll, they'll paint, they'll, the, we, they'll, they'll protect their paint like we use, uh, uh, either a gloss, you know, a gloss future. like a clear gloss. I, I use Future, believe it or not, uh, you know, floor product Future. Mm -hmm. Just put a pour it right into your airbrush and shoot it right on there. Um, after I do the, after I put the base, after I put the camouflage on and I put the decals on, I, I, I Future it to, to protect it. Then when when I start the the weathering process, I start in little areas. So like for instance, I'll do like just this area right here. And that's it. And I'll do all the colors. And I'll just do that little section. All right? And when I get it to I like it just right, what that provides you me is a map of how the rest of the vehicle is going to look. But the beauty of that is, so this right here is... Just the weathering. This is not camo. Just the weathering. Yeah, camo is already on. I've already shot the future, it's clear. So now I'm creating the the weathering effect. For so the streets, that, like one color only, or you mix and blend? Each... I, I mix and blend. Uh, I usually get a, a, a brown color that I really like, and I'll show you how I do that. Um, and then I use that in kind of a gray, grayish gray greenish mud color are the two colors that I use. So if you look at it, can you see kind of the gray tint along the bottom of those fenders? So that's what that's what mud kind of really looks like, right? When it dries, right? It gives you kind of that gray dusty effect, right? Um, same thing in the front here, you can see it, right? So that's a, that's a mixture of, of a lighter gray and a darker gray and a little bit of brown. All right, but if you look at that, right, I guess the point I'm trying to make is that it's not, there's nothing uniformed about it. Every, every part of the vehicle is, is different because it's all done in different sections and it's specific. So, so I, I zero in on this part right here and, and I just weather that, right? And then I'll go to the next part. Right, and then the next part, and then I'll, and then eventually, you know, you get to the back, right, where you can get that exhaust look with some grime and some grease, uh, where you where you've got the uh, the paint gets burned off, right, and you got some darker mud down at the bottom where you get a lot of a big collection there. See, can get in the hot spot there. Yeah. This light right here. Now, did you Go say you, you cleared it you before you did the weathering? Weather? Correct. Yeah. Okay, that's uh, terms. Correct. I clear it first, right? Then I weather it. Then I keep weather, 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 and then you can see the the top here. So the other the other thing too is, you know, so then I'll you'll do the top. This will be something completely different. So here you've got some fuel stains, right? Um, get a little bit more duster dustier look here as it gets caught up underneath, right? A little dirtier here towards the end, and then you got your different colors to get your effects uh, on, the, um, on the grills themselves, the air intakes and the exhausts, right? Um, <clears throat> same thing with the fenders. The fenders were done completely independent of each other and then put on after uh, just to give them a different look um, because what, what I, and again, you know, it's all in the eye of the beholder, right? It's what, it's what you like. But as, as I do it, as I see vehicles, right, uh, 
the normal way of doing this is you paint it, you future it, and then you give it a, a wash, right? People take a, a like a dark brown or and they'll they'll melt it down and then they wash the whole tank. What do you mean wash it? Yeah, they'll 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 take um, they'll take a, a light brown color and they'll literally wash the whole tank. Very and, diluted, right? Right, very, very, very diluted. Right? Oh, a lot of thinner. Make it dingy looking. Yep, make it dingy looking. Yeah. So the problem is though is that if, when you do that and then you take your what the, what they call a pin wash and they'll and they'll do each rivet and they'll do all of them at the same time. So the problem is, is that to me, all the tanks start to look the same, right? I mean, if you wash it and you pin wash it the same way, I mean, it, they all have the kind of this, they, they're all very repetitive and look, look the same. This, this, this theory or this method uh, of using the, of using the um, oils and doing little sections at a time and, and focusing in on that section First of all, I don't have a lot of I don't have a lot of time. Sometimes I only get like forty five minutes on my bench. Sometimes you know, uh, a day. Um, sometimes I don't get any. You know, even on the weekends, you know, I got to fight and claw for for time. So, if I want to just zero in on these two panels in this part here, I can. If I have forty five minutes, I can I can work that and get it to where I like it. You know. And then I can come back and I can look at it and I can see it and I say, hmm, okay, I like that. I like the way those colors look. Let me try these two panels now and see how they look. Templates. Exactly, right? You got a template. Yeah. Are those panels glued on or yes. you got one missing there? Yeah, they're glued on, yeah. So the, the missing one is, you know, battle damage. They lost lost it in combat. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the uh, the tanks, you know, they run into things. Same thing on this side, right? He's, he, he lost his, uh, his back too here all right so if you look at those two king tigers right those two king tigers on the table they would have those same kind of, of running uh, panels but they're completely off on both of those I just didn't put them on because a lot of times they've lost them completely um, so the same thing with the track the track is a mix of oils and pigments okay to give you the give you that look in there um, and you can do, are you guys familiar with a, uh, a dot filter? Have you heard that term before? Yeah. Dot filter? Okay. So let me, let me just show you a little bit of, of, how, this, of how this works. Um, the other thing I'd like to show you on the Italian tank real quick. So the other thing about filters that's really, really, or I, meant, I mean oils that's really good. So all of those straps and everything are all painted with uh, oils. And by hand, with with a with a brush, and I use number two. Uh, was that Lowell <coughs> Cornell is my favorite, right? Um, so I use a number two, and I paint those right on. And then any overage I have, I just take a little bit of thinner and I just rub it right off, right, till I get it right into the lines and it looks perfect. You're taking off the high spots with the brush, right? Yeah. So any time, any runoff that I have, right, as I'm Pools as I'm putting, if it if it runs off onto the actual uh, tarp itself, I just take a little bit of thinner and just rub it right off, right, and get those lines to look really, really sharp. Yeah. Get the soil paint from the hobby shop. Or? Get it right on. It'll focus. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Okay. So all that all that is done with uh, oils, like Michaels. A lot of places sell oil paint. It's for yeah, oil, oil painters, right? Right. So you can use artist paints, which are called. Oh, whoop, there we go. Uh, these are Windsor Newton, right? These are the best. These are expensive. This is like seven bucks, right? Um, now there is a company called uh, Uptilung Five Hundred Two, right? They they cut. This comes in a set. Um, I really really like these oils. Uh, I like the colors and the way they, they've really mm. dialed it in for, for weathering. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, you can get them at the hobby shop. And then I use just White Spirit. Right, this is AK White Spirit. But um, actually, I just buy a, a big, I just go to the, like, Michael's and get a big can of White Spirit Clear, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then I just keep refilling this. Mm -hmm. so, well, I'm sorry? What is the White Spirit? Thinner? Uh, yeah, it's the thinner, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, like like turpentine, terpenoid. Yeah, it's like oh, it's older. Yeah, it's odorless, thinner. Mm -hmm. I got to put my glasses on so I can read this. Yeah, 
we used to use uh, turpentine a lot in art school, design school. Yeah. And then they it, came out with terpenoid, which was the same, but yeah. odorless. And you want to get odorless. Yeah. Odorless. For sure. Yeah. White spirit. So I can. No, it will not. In fact, it, it's completely imper. It won't attack. The, it won't attack the plastic. It won't hurt the acrylics because it's oil, right? And be and because this is a, a, a white spirit here, because it's the the, the way it's uh, constructed, it doesn't hurt the plastic or the or the finish. Now, that's the other reason that I do the the clear uh, uh, future because that helps protect the uh, it helps protect the paint. Right. Helps protect your camouflage. Um, as so you that's, that that will leave a uh, that will leave a coating over the top of the paint. Yeah, you, but you won't see it. Yeah, you won't see it. But it, yeah, you won't see it. But it'll protect. It'll protect the paint. Yeah, and then you can you can see some of the. Now, did I see on one of your pictures uh, the treads? actually had look like it had dirt in it you know yeah gra gravel and stuff yeah and okay, snow that's cool. yeah right so like right there in the in the one in the middle there you've got snow all up in there yeah um yeah absolutely tell me what that is <laughs> yeah so um that that snow is just uh, it's model it's uh model railroad snow that you can get any railroad shop um works pretty well uh, mix it with if you want to make it look really icy and thin you just mix a little thinner a little thinner with it and get it to the right consistency um, and then the 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 snow is done with with oils and a little bit of uh, hairspray technique are you familiar with the hairspray technique no. yeah so hairspray is so you take you, you would uh, I would spray this with uh, with hairspray, just normal hairspray that uh, you know that women use, and uh, let the hairspray dry, and then spray it with white paint, um, and then you can take water if it's water-based uh, acrylic. You can take water and a brush, and then as you, you can you can attack the white paint, and it'll fall off, and it'll give you. Um, I'm bringing a tank over here. So we do something similar with salt, so it looks like flaking paint. Right. Basically, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. <clears throat> so the camouflage on this looked like the uh, the tank I just showed you, right? It was a it was the uh, what they called uh, olive um, the olive uh, not, not olive. I'm sorry. The dark yellow, dark yellow with red with a with a uh, what they call the dark bread or, or red brown and green, uh, and then I sprayed the whole tank white. I, 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 first of all, I painted the camouflage. Sprayed sprayed the uh, hairspray and then spray painted the whole tank white and then you take a I take a toothbrush and I just starts with water and start scraping away at it and you get this type of effect yeah. or the white that's cool before you do the white do you do the white. tank like full camo the way it's supposed to be yep just like that full full camo just like it's supposed to be no weathering <coughs> just full just full camoed up um, and then you can you can shoot it with uh, your your clear coat, your future, whatever you like to use, then hit it with the uh, the hairspray, and then whatever uh, color you want to use that you want to scrape off, you just spray it. For so for this, th what this represents is a whitewash that they would paint on the tanks during the wintertime, right? And then you can attack it with water, and the water will eat away at the white paint, um, but the hairspray protects the. Uh, the uh, the camouflage. It's a barrier. It provides like a barrier, so yeah. it'll 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 scrub. You can scrub away the the white, and it'll keep the underneath. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Gives it's you the, gives you a very nice effect. Mm -hmm. I use a flat white. Uh, I like Tamiya. I use mostly Tamiya. Um, 
uh, paints because I think they spray the best mm -hmm. for me. They, for me, they do. They're very easy to mix, mm -hmm. right? So like in a, for a Tamiya, a Tamiya that comes in a, in a jar like this, yeah. right? I can take it right there and it, it, it automatically has a spacing in there. You can just pour your thinner right in there all the way to the top, close it back up and mix it. And it's already mixed properly. You can you, know, you just pour it in and shoot it. You don't have to sit there and measure and everything. To me, it works really great. You just open it up, pour the thinner in all the way to the top, close it back up, mix it up, pour it in your in your airbrush and shoot it. You're saying thinner is that to me a thinner? Yeah, they well you could. Yeah. I like to use to me as thinner personally. They have an acrylic thinner. Yeah. And if you use the acrylic thinner, it makes the paint even harder. And it and when it goes on, it goes on beautifully. It really does. So the only thing that you're using the oil base on is the camel. Yeah, the oil. The oil I use only. <coughs> I, the only the oil I use only for the weathering. 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 The weathering. Right. Yeah. Well, isn't that future of wax? Floor wax. It is. It's a floor wax. And but stuff sticks to it. Oh yeah, it works great. <laughs> I didn't. I, 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 <laughs> Yeah, the guys in my club showed that to me, right? Because yeah. I used to shoot it with a clear, but uh, I really do like the way the future goes on. It really does work really well. It really does. Uh, yeah, it takes me to, to do to do one of these. It it takes me a good, with well, I mean, if I if I just sat and did it, but it takes me about three months, three four months to get it, um, to get to get it to. Uh, plus, I'm I'm extremely anal about everything, right? So it's just, I'm sure you guys are, right? You guys and gals are. related to Joe Fialco. You know, I mean, I, I, I mean. It, well, you know, when you're dealing with something that small, I mean, you know, you have to be very precise. I mean, you can't just be sloppy about it, right? Because it's yeah, about how I mean, big everything is. There's if you even look, I mean, even the, you know, the even, even the medals correspond to his rank and, you know, the guys have to be perfect. I mean, it's just. This is a guy that would know. Yeah, Rock was a tanker for how many years was it? Twenty six. Yeah, yeah. Oh. on Abrams tanks. So, um, is that a tow chain on the ground behind them? Is that a tow chain? Yeah. So what that is? That's the chain. So what happened? So this is a little. Uh, it's it's like a little mini diorama. So if you look, if you you really can't see. Let me see if I kind can. of storytelling environment. Yeah. Right? So yeah. Th this this right here says meaning. You know, do not enter. So obviously he. He he broke through the uh, the uh, the barrier. This is the barbed wire, right? He didn't see the sign, and he uh, blew a track off here. Mine or something? Yeah. So he hit one of the mines and blew a track off. So what he's got here, he's got his tanker's bar and his chain. So if you ever if you ever change track, you have to get a chain to have to to pull the track back over and to to actually execute. It's 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 a lot of work. Use a drive wheel to pull it over and all that, right? Yeah. yeah. So you know he's got his he's got uh, his fuel cans here downloaded, and uh, basically he's just sitting there saying, "Crap." Right? He does look a little bummed out. There. He's a little bummed out that he's, he was so stupid that I hit the freaking mine. Right? I didn't see the sign that was sitting, you know, right there. So that was the point of uh, that one. So so what I'll do is I'll, let me just show you a little bit. Um, and uh, we'll do we'll do a little bit right, right on here and kind of give you a an idea of what what I'm talking about. So so the oils when you when you first use them, right? They have they have they have some of them had linseed in them. They have little right. So you got to get it out. So you, you got to make yourself a little palette, right? Make yourself a little palette. So this this is dark. For example, here's dark mud. Uh, engine grease, and these are great colors. Brown. So this is brown wash. So this is why I use a lot of the streaking. All right. Just take it and just stick it right on there. And the other thing too, what's nice about this is that you know, I I I just get like a little plastic bag, and so when I put these on here, I just stick I just stick it right back into a plastic bag and. They're, uh, they, they last, they last for a while. Hmm. So this, about the or? I'm talking about the, this right here. Oh, you put that in? Yeah, I just put it in a plastic bag, yeah. So you're using like an easel. Yep, and I use it over and over and over again until this gets so hard that I can't use it anymore. It's like an artist palette, right? You see those things caked with paint. Yeah. You just keep using them, right? Yeah. 
Uh, I'm going to show you what a little engine grease Where can you like. get that, that, uh, those that set. Oh, that set there that you got. You, you, you can go on Amazon anywhere okay. you can order it. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I think even John had some mm -hmm. at the shop. I was going to say, don't you think John might have that? Yeah. Well, he I has some it. stuff. I just didn't yeah. know if it was yeah. the same Hobby brand. people has it, too, yeah. on 59 there. They've got these little micro sets like Rob's what, talking about. What's really, what's really nice about the uptiling, you notice you don't get a lot of, you don't get a lot of runoff Is where you, like you'll that? see here. <laughs> see here that when you squeeze these out sometimes well actually that's pretty dark that didn't work but sometimes you see you'll see the linseed oil that it builds up you don't want you don't want that so that's why you got to make yourself a palette I just use cardboard yeah that'll never dry <laughs> never yeah dry that I just oil. use mm -hmm. cardboard so all you need to do is get yourself some thinner and this, and and really, you're ready. You're you're ready to go. Um, like I said, I like the number two. So you just load the brush with a little bit of thinner. Can you guys see here? There you go. There you go. And just wipe it off, right? So it's dry. So the wetter the brush, the more the the obviously the thinner the paint's going to be, the more of a wash it'll be, right? <coughs> and then I just hit it. Just wipe a little bit off here, right? and then you just get right on top of it. That's a rivet right there. You're working on. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So those are those are rivets. Mm -hmm. Okay. You just get right on top of it, and then what? I always use one brush that's that's loaded. Then I use a brush that's like a stippling brush, right? All right. And then just. Ah, there you go. Oh, very nice. See how you kind of get that little yeah. drag off of there? Mm -hmm. Got to be yeah, vertical. You want to get off. A, a, a bolt that's rusty and the rust is... Well, yeah, it's not even rust. It could be just dirt, right? It could be dirt. could be anything that's, that got caught up around that bolt. could be grease. could mm -hmm. be anything you want. So let's say that this one here, you know, that's really too thick. I don't like it. Well, just get your brush back out again. Just load it up with some thinner. Right. Can you guys see okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay? Just take it and just run that thinner on there. And that'll thin it right out. And then take your stippling brush. Huh. And you can play with it. That's the beauty of yeah. this, right? You so now, so you how is right. the thinner not attacking the paint? Though? See, so now you got a totally you got different, different you got a totally different kind of effect. Of right? really you got a totally different paint. effect. And you have barrier that future right. <clears throat> barrier. And then you can just roll it, just keep playing with it. It's hard because I'm looking at it upside down. But, but as I'm sitting here, right, so if I'm there, I can see it better now. So as I get to it, so now look how subtle that is. Oh, yeah. See? And you can just have a field day with it and get it to wherever you want it. And then if you really hate it, you get yourself your big stippling brush and you just wet it and you just just blitz it blitz it <laughs> gone yeah and it's gone mm -hmm. right and then you can just you can if you really want to get it all off of there so there's no residue and you can do whatever you need to do right now if you want if you want to do a wash right if you want to do just a simple one it, it, one wash. What I what I do is I just I give it a couple of dots like that of that color, and I take this. Mm -hmm. So notice how that panel looks compared to that panel. Mm -hmm. It's like stained now. Yeah. Right. And when it dries, you're gonna get you're gonna get a, a darker. look to it now my f one of my favorite uh, techniques is the is the dot uh, the dot what they call dot filter and let's see there we go. get this out of the way to your right probably you're yeah okay you're left I'm sorry How's that? it's reversed yeah <laughs> camera's reversed <laughs> so this is some of the mud, all right? Clean that off. 
And then this is some of the dry mud. And believe it or not, on, on the greens, yellow. Yeah. And the blue. Alright. And then you take the stippling brush, which is your thicker brush. Load it up and then dry it off. And then I usually test it just to make sure. And then just take this and Separate. Blend them. Yeah. And you can start washing areas off. You can add more, right? You can start yep. playing with it. Yeah. Yeah. Now you, you can add more colors if you don't like a specific mm -hmm. color. Now I see the blue. Now when that dries, you're gonna get you're gonna get some mud, you're gonna get you're gonna get all those different colors are gonna give you a very interesting streaking effect. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> See the bronze. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The you can really see it now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're going to get a really faded, worn, and all the different colors are going to are going to are going to come together. And as you see those those blues at the top, that's too. If that's too much for you, how close is the result from when it's wet and when it's dry? Yeah. Color wise, does it shift much? Yeah, yeah. it will. It will. When it dries, you'll it'll it'll blend. It really blends in really nice together. Usually goes lighter. You think lighter than the colors you see when it's wet. It's lighter than the colors that you see when it's wet. <laughs> so now, if you want to. Take a little bit of the light mud along the bottom, let's say, and you want it to get Is that supposed to be mud? It's light mud, yeah. When it dries it'll be It'll give you a very nice color. I wish I, I should have brought my hair dryer. So a lot of times what I do, I have a hair dryer. I take it, I hit it with the hair dryer so I can see it if I really like it. If I don't like it, I can take it off really quick. I don't, uh, should have brought that for you. Even after the Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It, it, it'll take three days before those colors are not movable. Yeah. So now you can, it's queuing on your, on your shirt here. What's that? Oh. Focus. Try that. Now hold it. Yeah. It should focus. It's so low contrast now. It's trying to find something else higher contrast. Let's see if you can start there. Mm. Yeah. So look at the panels. See that you see the the subtle dirt now that you've got in between the panels, <coughs> and you've got all those colors now are coming together to give you your dust coat, um, your 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 mud look. Look at you can see the see the gray at the bottom. Starting to dry. That's the that's that light mud, mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> and it's really it's really that easy. I mean, it really is. The dot filter is if you have a really large area that you want to get at, you can mix all those colors and you just hit it. 
um, I'm, a, I'm a little bit more meticulous. So let's say we want to make these panels really sing. All right, we hit it, we can unload some paint here. You gotta have a little paper towel. And then just go right down the middle, all right. Kind of redefining your edges there a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but a, but a very good tip. So it holds a lot of water. It holds a lot of paint in there. You got to You got to be able to move some paint. Yeah. yeah. Dollar store brushes. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Been there, done that. <laughs> Tried shaving them down. Nope, doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work. So now you see how you. Yeah. So now how you see how the panels have just popped right off of there now. Wow. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so you get those brushes at Michael's? Um, I, yeah, I get them at Michael's. Yeah, Michael's or um, Hobby Lobby. The, the one I'm using right here is a Hobby Lobby brush. I really like it, number two. Um, but you see how the panels kind of pop out now? Mm -hmm. Now you see how the other colors are starting to come together? They're starting to give you that a little bit of a uh, mm -hmm. that faded look, and now you're getting a little bit of that. that and now you can continue. The nice part now is that the important thing is is layers, right? I, I went really heavy here to, so you can see a lot of those colors mixed together. But normally, I I do very very like I'll, I'll take those pan I'll do the streaking first and I'll hit all those little rivets and I'll let that set before I start going back to do the you know the mud and some of the other things. So the first you know one layer, and then sometimes. You know, this guy's probably got 12, 13, 14 different layers of different, you know, just keep going around until I get it just right, you know, just right. Um, Building it up in layers slowly. Right. So, yeah. and the other thing too is if you want to, let's say, let's say we wanted to make a little area of interest here with this uh, <coughs> panel. The other thing you can do, um, yeah, let's use, let's use the. Let's say we just want to do a little area of interest here with this panel. So you can put your put it put your uh, paint right on, and then just stipple it in, like so. That's uh, olive green. So what I'm trying to show you there is you can, you can change the hue of the panel by just applying a little bit of color and go ahead and just stippling it right in. So now you've got a contrast now between the two panels to where this could be uh, uh, you know, Dusty has been, uh, you know, hit by the sun, blah, blah, blah. And then you got, you, now you got one here where it's been discolored, right? It looks almost like Between oil, the two. Doesn't it? Like an oil streak or oil leak or something of that color variation right there? It, it could can, like, yeah, it could be almost yeah. anything that you want it to be. It, it'll, it'll dry up though. When it dries up, it'll be, it'll give you more of a, a defined difference. Um, so let's see if we can get, give you just one. I'll try not to be so dramatic with it. So you can use one brush to follow those different tints? Huh? Yeah, I use, um, I usually have one that's always clean, that always has, just has thinner, and I usually use one that just hits the paint. Okay. And then the stippler can be <coughs> pretty much whatever you want it to be. Yeah, so then you could hit that, if you, you, you could hit that with your, uh, that hit, you hit that with your uh, your hair dryer really quick and you take a look and see mm -hmm. how much of the color change you got mm -hmm. and if you like it um, or not uh, and the, the more you apply the more drastic the uh, the difference will be so you notice you see how this is starting to, to lighten up now it's not as 
-hmm. wasn't as drastic as before, right? It'll start to peel out. <clears throat> but the, the thing is, you'll have different shades of green because just like when you look at an armored vehicle rolling down the street that's had mud and everything shot all over it, right? The, green, the, the, the paint is not uniform. It's got all different colors to it. It's, some are exposed to the sun, um, you know, and some are, uh, you know, are, are not. And so you can get those variations very simply just by using these little techniques. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, and it's, and it's, all, it's all trial and error. And, it's, and like I said, that what I like about these is it's, it's very unforgiving if you don't like it. I mean, we could take, I could take this spear right now and load this thing up and we could probably take all of this off of here and it would be very close to what it looked like before. Right. You know, um, and then, yeah. if you just want. I don't know if the turpentine would eat it, the turpenoid. I don't know if it would eat foam or not. I think small spirits does. I mean, you know, so Rock's using it just for weathering, you know, not as a base color or anything like that. Yeah. That's where he's using the acrylics. Yeah, and then you get a barrier there between the foam, right? So you could go back and really do this, you know, all these techniques with oil on your foam plane because you have a barrier there, right? I mean, for what we do, if we're flying glow or nitro, you know, that 30% nitro will eat anything. So you have to go back and probably clear it with like class coat clear or satin, put some flattening agent in there to protect all of that work. But I think the idea of using oils is really great on our models because it gives us lots of time to go play around with these techniques and these effects, right? Mm -hmm. You have lots of time to go back and mess with it. Especially on World War One planes, I think it'd be awesome on the fabric. Mm -hmm. I'd be really good there. It would, if yeah, yeah on fat, it would do really well. We use a, a simulated uh, covering that simulates fabric covered uh, control surfaces like on ailerons, World War II planes, and World War One planes that were all made out of that stuff. And we're usually using class code, but that stuff, even when you thin it down, it's pretty volatile. It flashes off so quick that you don't have time to really push it around like you have, like you can do with this. Yeah. You can wash it back off with acetone and start over again, but I think this is going to give us a lot more variability. You've got lots of time to play with it, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> so what I did there is I made like a, like a very uh, interesting mud line, right? Mm -hmm. So you got, yeah. you got, you got the dark, you got the darker mud that went underneath, and then the lighter mud that sits up on top that's kind of dried. And you can, so that's that's an effect that I use. Again, this is overly dramatic, but you you get the idea of what you can do with it, right? With different variations in different colors. Um, so, see what I like. See, like even up here, as you look at the at the uh, at the blue. Right, you got a couple of different variations. You, there's a lot of things you could do with this now. You could make that a chip, right? You could uh, you could do a lot of different things with just how those two colors came out. Or if you didn't like it, you can just get rid of it. How do you do the chips? With a sharp. With a sharp. So I I no I paint the chips. I you paint a chip. I paint a chip. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So usually what I'll do is um, let's see if I got a dark color here. So let's to work. So you're like uh, base metals, what you're trying to see? Yeah, for it's going to be coat. it's going to be hard to see on this here. Oh, yeah, I see it there. Focus. It'll focus, focus by itself. Yeah, he's got it right there. There, there you go. Yeah, yes, it'll do you're it. Getting close. Yeah. yeah. So, just took a little bit of dark brown and just uh, dabbed it right in, right in the middle there. And then uh, the other thing, I don't have the right color here, and that's the problem. I have a, uh, I, have, I have a, it's called, it's a black brown that I really like that I use to build the chip with. And then in the middle of that black, black brown, I use that red primer to give it depth. So you'll have the discoloration. So you usually need a tricolor. So you got the discoloration of 
you got the discoloration that you created with the oil. And then you could put the dark black brown uh, chip in there. And then in the middle of that, you put the red brown, which means it's scratched all the way down to the primer. Um, I, I'm sorry, I just don't have the right colors here to make it. Uh, oh, we get it, though. Get you know, <coughs> you want you want to try to yeah you just want to try to give it as much depth as you can. Yeah, for uh, us it'd be bare aluminum is what we'd be doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Usually, usually it usually gets to the, yeah usually just gets to the primer. Um, so yeah, I mean if it's a, if it's a shot that gets in there, um, I have some colors that work pretty good for that. Um, you like a bullet that ricocheted off the side of the bank or something like that? Right, 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 right. So this is... Uh, this is that engine primer color. If you wanted to make some... So given the, the layers that you put on there, what would that take in terms of time for that to harden up enough that you could go to the next step? We'll just probably clear it, right? Or we would just leave it at that point. For us, we'd have to clear it, you know, to fuel proof it. Yeah. But so one, once days? once I'm happy with it, uh -huh. I'll I'll hit it with um, I'll hit it with a flat clear, uh -huh. and uh, and then it's locked in. And then it's okay, on the in. flat clear, would that be something you'd buy from Michaels? Like I, I go to Michaels and I buy the clear, uh, flat clear or satin clear. Yeah, exactly. I, I clear, yeah. But it, it's it's uh, under pressure. Oh, you buy the ones in the can. Oh, the can. No, I, I buy it where I can shoot it with the airbrush. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, the can's going to give you like orange peely type stuff. It comes out pretty thick. The airbrush, you're going to control it very yeah. finely, you know. <clears throat> Yeah, you could use, and I have used the can before on certain things that don't matter that much. But fine scale model like that, you definitely yeah. want something very flat, very <laughs> controlled. So if you want more of a wet, a wetter effect, mm -hmm. wet mud. Yeah, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. you you can you can have. Have you ever have you ever done a cockpit? You know, <clears throat> an, a, a, a airplane cockpit. I haven't. No. Why you, you're gonna do a fantastic job. Soon, yeah. though. Like yeah. Corsair. <laughs> yeah. I told him I like Corsair. So well, the other thing that you can add to this, you can use that as a fixer, is you can use. Uh, I'll use this because it'll be a huge contrast, and you'll get you'll get the. Um, now, is this the pigment? This is the pigment, right? Right. All right. So, what, did, what did you just do? I just opened it and I just poured some out. That's it. <laughs> you can't get it off camera. Oh yeah. yeah, sorry. Yeah. I pour. Yeah, I pour. Just poured some on here. Yeah. You could pour it anywhere. You could pour it right in the cap. Yeah. Right. So, I'm just going to grab some, and I'm just going to throw it on there like this. Now you're putting it on that wet area. I'm putting it on the wet area. Yeah. It's essentially gluing itself to it. Yeah, I'm putting it on the that wet area. Okay. <clears throat> and then I'm going to take my, my clear brush right. and I'm going to just kind of sculpt it a little this bit. This is simulating what? what? Yeah, I'm just showing how you can you can add some depth by, by putting a pigment on there because the pigments will give you more of a, it could be, this could be mud, it could be Tech, any type, of, yeah, any type of texture it could be any type of dark, right? And then, kind of shaping it with the brush there. Yeah. Then I, I usually I like to take like this little sponge, mm -hmm. and I just hit it. So I'm taking most of it off then. Yeah. Yeah. How did you learn how to do this? Trial and error. <laughs> it's kind of a fun of it, though. You can experiment, yeah. right? So now, see the effect that you have now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's by using a little pigment on there. Again, this is very dramatic. I know it's it's a lot, but you get the you get an idea of what you can do, like especially how it looks around that those rivets right yeah. there, uh -huh. right? So now with now you've got this here. See now you can get really creative and say, okay, I'm going to hit that rivet now with that brown. And see what that looks like. So every panel is kind of an opportunity to 
experiment a little bit. Yeah. So this is yeah. this is what I was telling you about. You know, I'll take forty five. I, I might take forty five minutes just to do a couple of these panels to see what they look like. Give us some nice variation there. See that? Yeah. So now you see what you can, the contrast you can make now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now that could be, it uh, could be a whitewash, you know, um, it could be um, just, could be, it could be light, light dust, uh, mm -hmm. depending on uh, how you, the effect that you're trying to get. Uh, and now as you see how it mix, mixes with the browns, you get, you can get rain streaks. Again, a little overly dramatic, but look how that panel starts to look now. You've got the grime on the bottom. You've got the dark, you got the darkness on the rivets. You got the layer of the grease that was underneath there, right? That kind of gives you that look. So you got the dust that's on the on the grease, right? And then you got the streaks from the rain. Yeah. yeah. So, really see, good. so like this panel right here, I, I kind of like that panel. Mm -hmm. Just kind of threw it together, but I kind of, I, I would, I would like the way that would look. Um, so now, the the beauty of that is, you hit that with the the uh, the airbrush, or the airbrush, the uh, the hair uh, hair dryer, mm -hmm. get it to dark, get it to dry really, really good. So now, what what this becomes, this becomes your. Um, your template, right? right. You got your right? formula down. You got I got my formula down. now. I kind of yeah. see how I liked it, right? Looks good. So now when I go to this one, I'll do a little bit, do a little bit of the same. We'll go to this one. Maybe I'll use a different pigment. Mm -hmm. Give it a different bit of a, a pigment tone. In fact, we could, we could do that right now, real quick. Just see what the other pigment looks like. So we'll take a little bit of our. Question for you. Sure. What kind of detail um, in the, the, the model itself, as far as relief, does it, uh, does, uh, do they show the panel lines and the, uh, the rivets, or, or do you have to know the mechanics of how these are put together to add them? Um, they, they usually come with it, but a lot of them are not correct. So there may be some adjustments that you have to make, but um, for the most part, you know, they, they come with it. So now I'm going to use this other pigment, which is a little darker. So I think it's an Af Africa brown. Africa poor. And This stuff must last you a long time. You don't use very much. Yeah, it, it does. Yeah. It does. They they you don't have to buy a whole lot of it. See now you can bl kind of blend it into the other uh, panel. Mm. So if you want to make it run together a little bit, it's almost like a rust sort of uh, representation there. Yeah, it could be. Like that, it could be. Like that, it could right? be. Yeah, it could be rust. Could be yeah. dark mud, mm -hmm. and then. Let's say we'll hit this with the brown again here, but but you notice we got a lot of brown on those bottom two rivets, so we're gonna hit that with the mud. See what happens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I do. I, this is like really good mental decompression time. You could be doing this on the, uh, what is it, the 80 inch Corsair you've got or something? Yeah, <laughs> I'm already <laughs> thinking of that for about a year and a half. Well, that's the beauty of this, out. right? So, you know, so we know, we know the um, uh, Dave Platt sort of method of modeling 
airplanes and weathering. So this guy, Rock, uh, he was kind of credited with, uh, he built all the models for uh, Battle of Britain, the movie. Oh, wow. Back in the day. And when they would look at the dailies every day that they would shoot of the models flying around, they still looked like toys. So it wasn't until they started using, not oils, but weathering techniques from plastic modelers that they started doing these to their flying models that they started to look more realistic. And so that sort of started this whole thing of scale modeling for model airplanes. So, oh yeah, look at the streaks on that. Wow, yeah. It's still wet, but yeah. So now you've got, you got the two panels, how they kind of run together. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, again, it's a little dramatic, but but you notice how you got the brown, sort of rusty uh, there on the right with the lighter on the left, and then you could blend those very easily. You could spend some time and blend those and get them to uh, probably needs a little. See that this it's only it, to me it's addicting. I always I get into this thing and I'm like, okay, now I gotta do this. <laughs> and now I gotta do this. You know, and now I gotta do this. We all know how it goes. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Disappear into the basement five or ten hours later, you're like, oh yeah, maybe I should go upstairs. See what's yeah. going on. So <laughs> I have I have a huge dog um, who he's his dad was a great Pyrenees and his mom was a golden. So he's got the personality of a golden. But he's got the size. You got the 115 pounds of the Great Pyrenees, <laughs> and so he he. When I go down to the basement, he absolutely hates it. Right? He goes down. He gives me this look, like Jesus Christ, not again. You got to sit in here again. Can't right? the table the can, again. Can't we go do something? Right? And he literally he sits outside. He won't even go into the in, into the basement where I have like a little room down there, right, with the rest of the trash of the house, and uh, where I have a little area carved out and uh he sits outside of that room and and literally waits for me it's kind of funny but yeah but he gives me the most disgusted look when i go down there um, we're all familiar i wasn't gonna say anything but i was looking at you john marika's not here she told me last time though she goes oh johnny loves those models he's always downstairs working on stuff yeah. Going out very familiar with it. Yeah, yeah, everybody in bed. Close the door and relax it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's no door. <laughs> Remind him, he's going to have to get a dog one of these days. So, so, yeah, yeah. so now I just took I just took a little bit of the brown and a little bit of the thinner and just ran it across to blend it together a little bit. That looks so real. Maybe like a great engine bay kind of area, you know, like yeah. a firewall kind of for models. Right. I mean, it's pretty wow. cool looking, yeah. Yeah, you can. Very cool. You can get uh, you can get all kinds of crazy, and 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 I said you know, and and, and normally uh, I, I use a lot of paint here to to get the to get you to see it. Normally I'm very very intricate on on hitting the you know getting the right amount of paint on the brush and getting it to be. Uh, but the problem is you you would it's very hard to see. So a lot of times someone asked me before I can't remember. I'm sorry, but it, I usually have these on, and I usually have one of those headsets on with the device. You know, yeah. it's like forty-five thousand power, right? So I can see, <laughs> you know, I, I can I can see you know right into the middle of that rivet when I'm hitting it right the way I want to hit it. Yeah, it, it's it, it's that I'm that crazy about it, but um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. the surgery arm. <laughs> That looks so real. It really That's does. awesome. It really does. So when you're blending and you're going at it and it dries on you, and you still want to blend, you'll just go back and hit it with the spirit, wet it up again. Yeah. Yeah. It, and you, sometimes you don't know what you're going to get, right? So sometimes, you know, I'm my own worst enemy, right? Because I want it, it to be, I, yeah, it, 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 I had it in my mind, or I just wanted it to be perfect, and I'll go in there and I'll hit it, and I'm like, and then I, I, I got a totally different look to it, and then I'm like, damn it, ninety nine percent perfect. You try to make it a hundred, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, you know, <laughs> and, and, there. and so it, it uh, yeah. yeah, it, it's part of the game though, right? It's, it's part, part of the game, fun, right? Yeah, it's it's, it's a little roll of the dice. Yeah. You're yeah. thinking in the back of the zero. Now another another uh, another technique that works really well, and I didn't bring a tool, but um, if we if we bring that if I bring that tank up, you want to bring that other tank up real quick? Yeah, yeah, just. John, this might be the defining moment for you this year. Leave your credit Oops. card on the table. Yeah. Another. <laughs> yeah. You want some more room here? Yeah, get us out of here. 
Let's look over here. Here. So I, I, I hope. I, I hope you got a little bit of an idea of how to, how the, how the, <coughs> let's see if you can, yeah, this is a very heavily weathered vehicle, so you're going to see a lot of the dr dramatics here, mm -hmm. okay, um, I should probably close this up before it ends up all over somebody, yeah, that never happens, right? <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. So, yeah, there's. Look at that. That's awesome. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot going on there with. Right. You've got some of the, you know, different mud colors here. You got the you got the white camo, uh, that's that's dirty running off. Um, you know, you've got the mud, up underneath there. Um, and then. Yeah, that's the picture I showed. Uh -huh. All the mud. Yeah, so if you see the, yeah, right up up underneath into the tracks, right? You'll see there's snow and dirt up in there. Um, Rusty and crusty. Yeah. yeah. See the snow up underneath in the corners. Mm -hmm. I mean that's important because snow's going to get caught up in there. Um, <coughs> trying to see if you can see the splatter marks. You really can't. Um, on the side there. You know, yeah. The hall. So what I what I do to get some of the some of the splatter marks is I literally will take the the brush and then I'll take uh, like a, f a a flat tool and I literally just hit it like that and I just go like this. I'll spatter it. And I will spatter it yeah. right and I and I, and I get some of this spattering look here. You really can't see it. You'll have to you'll have to come up and take a look at it after. But now, are those bullet hits or bullets that hit the tank? Um, they're they're just damage. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be a bullet. It can be you know tanks or uh, I mean they could have they could have been they could have been trying to put the track up here and dropped it and ran it across the side. Now this is a, this was intended. Up on the He's talking about it's part of the camo pattern. See up there oh the yeah yeah the no this is part of the ambush uh, camo pattern. So they, they put dots of the opposite color um, into the camouflage pattern. The Germans called it ambush. Um, yeah, you, you can't see the dots that's in the, in, the, in the olive color, in the olive, or not the olive color, but the uh, dark yellow. Where do you get the wood plaques? Uh, do you make them? No, Michaels. Oh, the whole Yeah, I just go Michaels and, yeah. And I just stain them and throw them on there. Um, so, so this was in, this, yeah, this was intended to be damage here. A ricochet that would hit, that hit and went up the side of the glacis here. Um, uh, the the grass is just you know stuff you could buy at a model railroad shop. Yeah. And that's the railroad snow you're using there. Yeah, too? it's the railroad snow that I was using, and then yeah. Lots of uh, lots of the oils and pigments on those wheels to get them to. Mm -hmm. They look very very weathered, very rusty. Yeah. Were you using oatmeal for snow for a while or something? Wasn't somebody using oatmeal? Mm, not spray me. it. Was kind of a crusty kind of look. Wet oatmeal. They soak it. Let it sit there. Yeah. Yeah. So this camouflage pattern was specific to the, to this German unit. It was the 509th uh, heavy. Tank battalion. I, I liked the, that camouflage pattern. I had a picture of it, so that's why. Uh, do you use a picture? I do. I do. I do a lot of research yeah. to try to get them. Helps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this this tank right here, the the one that I'm still working on here, is actually that's a Porsche suspension, um, and it's actually a uh, hybrid electric drive. Believe it or not, it actually has electric motors in there, huh. along with the uh, gas motors. What year tank was that? 1944. It was like had electric. Mm -hmm. motors. Yep. The, the original Porsche design for the Tiger tank, these are King Tigers, but the Tiger tank was an electric hybrid, uh, electric motor design. And the only reason that the Germans didn't pick it is because they didn't have enough copper for the motors. Um, they were they were just uh, metal poor, you know. Mm -hmm. So they would use the gas engine in the tank to drive a generator and. Yep. 
The two gener the way they do a diesel. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Like a submarine. Yep. Right? Like yep. To stand and, and the idea was to save on gas. And uh, it uh, the problem is they just didn't have the copper to run the uh, the electric part of the engine. Well, that's the first. I never heard of that. Yeah. Very interesting. I know I had to explain it to my engineers a couple of days ago when they were thinking. They, I said, you know, Professor Porsche did this in 1942. <laughs> and, uh, wow. you know. Well, well, a lot of us go way back with electric airplanes. Right. And I, I flew an electric airplane 12 years ago that had a 40, 42 volts. We had 42 volts in the battery. They were 5,000 milliamp, and the airplane would stand right up on its tail and go straight up. I mean, it was very powerful for even 12 years ago. And that was, those were nightcans back then, right? You're using nightcans, oh, no, no, right? I was using uh, power. Really? 12 years ago? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hmm. But I remember the earlier ones. The batteries were like $350 each. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> like 700 bucks worth of batteries in the airplane. Different now. But yeah. Huh. So, uh, what questions can I answer for you? How do you know when you're done? What's that? How do you know when you're done? <laughs> you know, because Scotty really needs to know, because Kathy really wants to know. Yeah, I really like that. It's when yeah. Kathy knocks on the door and says, Scott? You know, that, that really is a great question because, you know, I am, with this guy right here, um, I, I'm really happy with the, uh, how, how, that's, how that's coming and I'm, I'm debating on, on whether, you know, it's, I'm going to just keep it kind of a light, uh, a light weathering and, uh, and, and leave it or, or not, you know. It depends on how happy you are with it. Yeah, it kind of depends on how happy I am with it, right? And, and, the, and the look that I'm trying to get. Um, Have you done any of the uh, Iraqi tanks, the, the tanks, the tanks that we're using now? Um, yeah, in fact, I have... He's destroyed a lot of them. Yeah, <laughs> literally. Yeah, you'll get to, you'll, you'll see that. <laughs> yeah. Well, really got weathered real quick. Yeah. He'll tell you a story about that later. Yeah. yeah. The um, uh, I have I have some kits for uh, uh, modern day armor. I just I just haven't done it yet. I've got I've been kind of on this German armor kick. I've got a couple of uh, U.S. vehicles that I want to make an M, like an, an M10 tank destroyer. Uh, George will make you one. Have you ever done any of the radio control tapes? Um, I do. I have a. I have a. I have a. I have a King Tiger, a real, a big one, a one sixteenth scale that was radio controlled. Well, you say one sixteenth. Uh, what two feet long? No, I've never done the. In no, fact, we were the Tiger tank that you said you had that was radio controlled. Oh, 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 yeah, it's yeah, it's about that big and about that tall. Yeah. There's a big um, one. Well, what you have to do is bring it out to the field when we have the work. The yeah, we've talked about it already. Uh, yeah. 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 I've, already, I've already been kind of we'll bomb it. talking about that <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Similar. Well, no, no bombing on that. Oh, yeah. A lot too much work on that. We'll bomb it <laughs> we do have, have an RC tank that we bring out there, and it, is, it drives around on the field, and we do practice trying to drop some bombs on it. Sure. But obviously not on something like that, right? The, um, but talk, tell them about the bigger one. Yeah, so there's a, there is a company in England called Armor Tech that that has one six scale. They're huge. Yeah, they're huge. They're uh, those two hundred pounds. Yeah, it's like the size of this table. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Big. They drive them in and out of their vehicles because they can't. Yeah, lift you them. gotta have a trailer to haul it around. It <laughs> is. It's. Uh, it's. Yeah, I think there. I think there was a guy at the Toledo show four or five years ago. That, that had yeah, one. we talked to that guy. He lives in in uh, West Bloomfield. Actually, he had two of them there. He and his buddies, and they had them. They would yeah, fire. This tank was like. Yeah. Five, six feet long, if not. Yeah. yeah, these are these are bigger. I talked to him. He mostly constructed that out of wood. These are all metal. Yeah, these are these, these are, are heavy. Un, these are unbelievable. You can you can YouTube them in Armor Tech yeah. vehicles. Armor Tech. Yeah, they, they. I mean, they got. Yeah, it, they they sound like uh, the engine sounds are there and everything. I'm putting the wrong sound here. Really big sound system. Yeah, they're there, you know, yeah. Doing all that. Gun, yeah, the gun looks. It's, they're they're crazy. Yeah, it's like it's like five grand for this kit. Yeah. yeah, the problem with the with our model planes is they can't put a well now they're doing that resonating thing in the fuselage right before they couldn't put speakers in there that were loud enough that when you're flying this thing you could really hear, hear it at a distance right the George, the startup George there's a, there's air, two airplanes on the market right now and the guys down at Pilgrim there's a couple of them there. 
It's yeah. like a B, B-17, and it's, you, you can hear it roar by. I mean, it's pretty well, now they're doing that resonating thing where they're using the, the cavity of the fuselage to be like a like a bass box, whereas before it was just a speaker in there. They're, they're actually using the, the vibration in the fuselage and the cavity there to project the sound farther. They've only been doing that a couple of years, though. You can see it's, it dry up? it's drying a little bit more. The more it dries, the, the better it looks. I mean, it's starting to... It's getting kind of uniform. Yeah, see how it's starting to uniform itself out. Yeah. See, oh, there's rich there. There you go. There you go. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you see, if you get your hand in front of it, it will probably focus on that real quick. Do what? If you do this, let's see. Yeah, a little better. Yeah, so you get some good. It's good, so a little contrast, yeah. it's having a hard time. Yeah, so you see, on the right panel, we did more of the grays, and on the left panel, we did more of the browns. At the top, and then at the bottom, we reversed it. Right, we had more of the grays at the bottom on the left, and the browns at the bottom on the right with the pigments. So, you can get all kinds of different. To me, at least with with armor and everything, you, you don't want it to look uniform, right? You don't want it to look dress right dress. You don't want all the all the dots looks because they didn't look that way. Right? They, they're just it's random. The weathering is random, right? And and where the mud sticks and everything else. So. Factory That's, fresh was only one day, right? you know. Right. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Very cool. Guys, any more questions for Rock? Are you good? I'm good. I I I hope you. Uh, I hope this. Oh. I got a Corsair cockpit detail you can do for me. Sure. <laughs> you just took the class right there. Yeah. I, I actually I actually have a, a B25 Mitchell. It's got a 95 inch wingspan and all the. The bombardier, cockpit, uh, the tail gunner, side gunners, all of that. I got all the cockpit detailing for all of that. But I'm not putting it in until I fly here. <laughs> That's a good idea. That's the one thing we have to contend with is the possibility of what if yeah. happens yeah. on takeoff to land. So usually we'll build them, fly them in primer first, and then you slowly start adding stuff. You know, yeah. but you'll see some of that. You start coming out on Tuesdays. You know, I'll get you out there and kind of slowly introduce you to the the other side of the hobby, which is the flying part of it. You know, this is this is boring compared to what we do normally on Tuesdays. You know, yeah. I have a have a business meeting. Yeah, but flying out there, we get together, have a good time, and everyone's always bringing something out there. It's kind of interesting to look at. You know, sure. And they have some techniques that are interesting, some build techniques, different equipment, different kinds of engines. So you never know what you're going to see out there, especially on Tuesdays. So I'll have you out there at some point when it works for you on a Tuesday, and. Uh, We'll go from there. So I really appreciate you coming out. Oh, I, I do have a question. You okay. said that before you do the start the weathering, you clear coat them first, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So, so I, I do, uh, yeah, do the. Uh, oh, one one thing I I I'd, I'd like to add is that um, the I do a uh, I do a pre I do a pre shading of the uh, of the paint. So. When I when I paint the tank originally, or when I, after it's built and I'm ready to paint, I, I paint it like in a a very dark dark gray or like a, a what a, a, what they call NATO black, mm. which is like a black gray, and then I take uh, either a flat white or a lighter gray, and I hit all the highlights. Mm. So you got a, you got like a negative, right? A black and white negative is what you're looking at. Then I hit it with the dark yellow very light coat of the dark yellow and the black and the white behind it it will bring out all of the detail um, around the vehicle and that's kind of get that gets you started on where you want to start your your weather then, then put your decals on then you clear coat it future whatever you want to use and then you can start your weathering process but that that pre-shading uh, I like using it it's a lot. Some guys don't like doing it. They they post shade. In other words, they they spray it their color and then they take a lighter color and they highlight. Um, I like the pre shading technique myself because it it, help, it helps you see the the flow of the of the vehicle because you've created a negative behind it and uh, it and it helps you uh, with where to apply your oils and which one or your weathering doesn't need to be oils. Do you spray the future? I airbrush it. Airbrush it? You have to thin it? Nope. Right nope. Out right out of the bottle. <laughs> right out of the bottle and shoot it. I'm not familiar with that. Future? Future, yeah. This is a floor polish. Floor I used that for a long time for plastic oh. models. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's something you buy in Home Depot. Yep. Yep. Yeah. yep. Same thing. Yep. Hmm. Very good.
Anything else? That's all I got. Guys, anything? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Rock's going to be back in uh, probably later when we start our indoor cycle again in October, November, December, January sure. to do really this is a very small part of what Rock is and what he does. He's a very well decorated, very well known um, military leader during that Iraqi conflict. <laughs> and he's got a really amazing uh, presentation to do that was really because he had a lot of uh, media that was embedded with his team. And um, they were sort of the tip of the tip of the spear uh, with the Republican Guard when they met those guys, and they were the ones that pretty much put them down in a very short order. So he's got quite the story to tell and a good presentation sure. for that. So we'll have him back for that. But when we have the next indoor cycle, okay, we're not going to do this out of the field, obviously, because we need the projectors and the screens and all that stuff. So yep. but between now and then, we want you back. We want you to come back on a Tuesday, come out and fly with us, hang out with us a little bit. Great. Thursday, we'll put you on a trainer. We'd be happy to have you. I'd, li I'd, li I'd enjoy it. A on lot. behalf of the club, myself, it's yeah. been a pleasure. Thank, Thank you so you. much. My, really my pleasure. It so much. I, I, yeah, yeah, I hope you. I hope right. it helped no, greatly right. because this is a very different method of weathering that yes. really in RC we don't do. <clears throat> you know, but I think that there's elements of this that you could easily adapt, especially for World War One stuff. I mean, with the fabric and all that, staining and all that, yeah. and being able to play with it continuously while it's wet. On the, you know, we're doing washes because we have, like I say, this fuel proof issue. For most of our glow-driven planes that are four strokes, and they splatter oil and yep. caustic fuel all over it. Um, real oil. Yeah, natural. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, natural. Castor oil. oil. Yep, <laughs> it's gaster. So, <laughs> so anyway, so being able to apply some of this stuff and then clear coat over that to fuel proof it, I think is a great, great technique that we haven't really thought about before. But now we can start thinking about it. And you saw how it's done, right? right. Yeah, Very and good. like I said, if uh, if you look up, if you YouTube, uh, I think it's Mike Rinaldi. Mm -hmm. He kind of uh, pioneered this, uh, you know, and he does he does a great job. He's way better than I am. So, yeah. uh, this, this is an awesome model. So, so glad you brought those in, and I guess this worked out well enough that everyone could see no, this in was great, great detail how you were doing that. So that was excellent. Yeah. So I have my big armor show is like in four weeks. Mm -hmm. It's the uh, amps, which is the armor modeling, blah blah blah. It's like it's the Super Bowl for armor guys. Mm -hmm. So it's in Buffalo this year. So. <coughs> Okay. Which is nice. Are you setting that one up to go? Yeah, that guy's going to go. I'm probably going to bring him to, and uh, then this guy. This guy. This guy won a gold medal last year at that. At that, uh, which was great. You got a good picture of this. Uh, when I sent out the email, I said, award-winning, Rock Marcone. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't kidding. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. I know you placed first, second, many, many competitions. So yeah, they, there it is. Yeah. I actually, yeah, I, I actually got uh, two gold medals at the last uh Two golds and a silver. So I was very happy. Awesome. Awesome. Very good. All right, guys, we've got a couple more things to do on the meeting here, but we'll wrap this part of it up. All right. Uh, I can show some of the photos if you want to. Yeah, yeah. Over. If you want to switch over, just real quick. I, we can flip through those. And Is this the guy?